Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our latest edition of Meet the Employer. For those of you who were with us yesterday, we had Worcestershire NHS, all about getting into the healthcare sector, and you can watch that back on the Even Break website. But today, it's <laughs> all about getting into media. So who have we got with us? We have got Lifted Entertainment, which many of you won't have heard of. They are a label that sits underneath ITV. So if you want to work for ITV, if you want to work in television, if you want to work with Anton Deck or others, <laughs> then this is the place to be. And I'm sure lots and lots and lots and lots of candidates here are really excited about this as I am. So who have we got with us sharing? We've got BSL captioning and uh, we've got BSL interpreters and captioning available for all of you. And we also have Lauren, Natasha, Sam, and Eve. And I'm sure they'll tell you much more about this. But for now, I will drop off into the background and I'll <laughs> touch base with you towards the end. Handing off to you guys. Thank you so much, Mahavis. Great, great introduction. Thank you. Um, <laughs> um, as Mahavis said, I'm, I'm Lauren, everybody. Really nice to meet you. Thank you so much for, for joining us and being part of this event. We've been really, really looking forward to this. Um, I'm Lauren. I'm the uh, talent executive for Lifted Entertainment. I'll go on to say what that means, what that means shortly. Um, and I work alongside um, Eve, who can introduce herself. She's part of our talent team too. Hi, Eve. Hi, yeah. Hi, everyone. I'm Eve and I'm the talent assistant um, with Lifted Entertainment. So I joined in November at the end of last year. Um, and I, like I said, work with Lauren and we just kind of, we'll tell you all about our jobs, but yeah, we just kind of work together to source new talent really and bring them into our shows. And we're, we're both here today. I look after a lot of the kind of senior talent and Eve looks after a lot of our junior talent. So we've covered both angles for you. We'll go, <laughs> on, to that. We'll go on to that shortly. I'll hand over to, to Sam and Natasha now to introduce themselves. Hi everyone, um, I'm Natasha, it's such a pleasure to uh, be here. Um, so as you can see, I'm the Creative Diversity Coordinator. So Sam and I work in the diversity and inclusion team here at ITV. Um, so part of my role is looking after um, kind of some of the, the talent pools that we have of kind of diverse talent um, and our on-screen work that we do kind of ensuring we have that representation and working really closely with our five fantastic um, networks as well, which we'll hear a little bit more about later. Uh, hi everyone, I'm Sam Tatlow, uh, one of ITV's Creative Diversity Partners and uh, I work closely with Natasha. It's my role really to deliver on ITV's uh, diversity and inclusion strategy, so across on screen, off screen and across the workforce. So you'll hear a bit more about what the work that we're doing across the business, and particularly in off screen roles um, to develop the representation and increase the number of disabled people working on our programmes. So um, thank you so much for joining us all today. Thank you. Um, yeah, and just to give you guys a summary of really what you're going to get out of today's presentation, obviously we've got sort of ourselves and we work closely with these guys as well, requesting sort of um, talent to ensure all of our shows at Lifted Entertainment in particular, because that's what we look after solely, um, are completely diverse, completely inclusive. We love to get lots of recommendations um, sent into us and we, like, we really enjoy doing events like this to ensure you know who we are what we do and how you can get into lifted um so that is essentially what this is all about in a nutshell um if we can just go to the next slide please that'd be great thank you very much um so if we sort of kick off um from a lifted point of view and a lifted perspective about who we are what we do because i'm sure not all of you will know who we are and what we do so it's a good start um and then we can go on to tell you a little bit about kind of what we do it within our team and how we can get you into television if that is um your your ambition um so lifted entertainment um is a label that sits like we said at the beginning under the itv studios uh so we're a label within it we produce 
predominantly all unscripted entertainment shows um, such as Saturday Night Takeaway, I'm a Celebrity, Dancing on Ice, uh, The Voice UK, um, lots of uh, sort of University Challenge, which our team in the North cover. Um, uh, so we've got lots of reality TV formats, including Love Island, Love Island After Sun, lots of the Love Island spin-off shows like Olivia Meets Her Match. Um, and yeah, many, many more. We do the Royal Variety, we do one-off music specials. Um, so we're a very, very busy company with huge teams um, that we are uh, responsible to ensure our are, are crewed up, staffed up, um, and, and have the very best talent and the most diverse teams um, that we can possibly find uh, to make the fantastic shows that Garth produced, you know, are, um, by, by these great teams. So great talent equals great shows is what I always believe. So that's what we, um, that's what we try and do. Um, so we're digitally led entertainment media company and we create sort of, you know, we bring brilliant content to audiences. Um, and um, yeah, that's, that's kind of who we are as lifted entertainment. And there are some of the shows that we produce. So if we go to the next slide, that'd be great. And there are some of our um, images for you um, to see just some of the shows that we've got going on at the moment. So yes, like I said, keeps us very busy because they're very large teams, but they're very good fun to work on. And we do have a little video here, which we're gonna play now. <laughs> Do you remember? Five single girls came looking for love. This is our new home. Five single boys joined them, or girls. And after coupling up, they soon got the message. Hey boy, Chloe here. I have never seen anyone as frightened in my life as he was on that trial. You guys are set the ball. He was smiling when he fell down. <laughs> he was still smiling when he got up. Will there be a transfer fee involved? Will there be a transfer fee involved or? Transfer fee? Yeah. <laughs> Jerry's lost his <laughs> 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 To be the band of the moment is an amazing experience. Welcome to my kaleidoscope. We must get another little send off in April. Who's left? <laughs> <laughs> French words meaning oven, fur, light, and brown. Daniel F.O. F.O. is correct, yes. Let's get on with the show. This one's called Greatest Day. Today this could be. And the winner is the one with the loudest voice, Holly Oaks. Before it all ends. Then did you from this side? Before we. The competition to find the smartest school in the UK. It's the right answer. Now, <laughs> 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 
can watch that again if you like. No. <laughs> um, so yeah, there, that I must say that is. Uh, so we need to update. We're up in the in the kind of course of updating sort of our new series and our new shows for that. But we do still make a lot of those shows. But um, just so you know, we're in the midst of updating it with new clips and things like that. But um, you get a sense of all the shows we produce with that. Um, so I feel like we should sort of go on very quickly because I'm very aware of time. We've got a lot to get through. Just to let you know who we are as a talent team, uh, what a talent team do um, and how we can help you um, and how we can sort of, you know, work together and introduce you to, um, you know, lots of people within our department. So at Lifted Entertainment, uh, we have a base in the South, which we work in, myself and Eve, um, and we have a base in the North. Um, and we cover shows predominantly, we crew up for a lot of freelance editorial talent. So what I mean by that is what we have a fantastic work experience pool for entry level talent. Um, and we crew up all of our, all of our roles from um, researchers up to you know, producers, and then executive producers. So we in the talent team here look after the editorial side of things. Um, and it's done on a freelance basis. So you might come in for a couple of months to fill a contract and then you leave us to go on to another contract and then you come back and it, it sort of works like that is kind of the, uh, how we sort of predominantly work and how we predominantly crew our shows. Uh, we are the sort of first point of contact for all live job opportunities within Lifted. So um, whenever we uh, receive a job request, we will put it out on our Facebook groups and we use Talent Manager um, to ensure that, um, yeah, we're sort of, you know, reaching out and we obviously could, uh, work with business partners as well to make sure they get our adverts as well so they can share it with their alumni and people um, in their databases too. too. Um, and we also ask Natasha sometimes to help us send across recommendations. That is another way we, um, <clears throat> we sort of source talent as well. Um, but we do, you know, we pride ourselves on meeting new talent weekly and new diverse talent weekly. And, um, you know, throughout, throughout the year, we ensure that this is growing. Um, and we, you know, our main aim is to ensure that, you know, Lifted is an inclusive place to work. So that's very, very much at the forefront of our kind of minds um, within the team. Uh, we run educational outreach um, and we run obviously talks like this with our business partners throughout the year. Again, all goes towards finding new talent, exciting talent, new creative uh, minds is what we're kind of after. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, we run a really exciting, really successful work experience talent pool, uh, which Eve will probably go on to talk about a little bit in a moment. Um, but it's um, it, it really, really helps with entry level roles who don't know anything about TV. Um, we provide a one year kind of membership with us to sort of take place and and hear lots of master classes. You might get a two week work placement and one of our shows. Um, and this opens every year for for those entry levels. So it's it works really well and certainly something that I would recommend everybody applying for. Um, so that's what we do as the talent team uh, in Lifted. If we go to the next slide. I will rush through this because I know this will be this is you want to know how to get jobs but it's just good for you to understand who we are and kind of our backgrounds just so you're aware you know we're not just an email address away we're very personable we've all come from television backgrounds and we you know we understand um how it is to uh, you know want to break into an industry you're really passionate about I think it's really important uh, for you yeah, to understand our background. So I um, uh, I was studied at the Brit School of Performing Arts, which is sort of a, mu a musical theatre kind of performing arts um, uh, college. So I've always had a kind of interest in entertainment, entertaining audiences to some capacity, I guess. Um, I went on to further education and I studied media practice and theory at university um, and at universities where I sort of got a lot of experience with um, 
uh, working with cameras and the editing suites and, and, and understanding the tools that were needed. Um, but it was actually during university I got my kind of work experience, um, which I recommend to everybody to try and do. Um, and I got some day running work on series one of Britain's Got Talent, showing my age a little bit there. Um, but yeah, Britain's Got Talent and The X Factor. And I just did lots of day running and, and helped them out as much as I could throughout my um, uh, my university years as well. So I tried to do that sort of simultaneously. Um, I progressed through a sort of 12 year freelance career myself, so I understand a lot of these roles we grew up for. Um, 12 year career through to run, you know, from runner, researcher, assistant producer, producer up to senior producer on lots again of entertainment shows is my background. So, um, you know, like Take Me Out, The Chase. Big Brother, The Circle, All Together Now, which is a big singing show we got commissioned. And most recently, before I joined the, uh, the uh, talent team, uh, Love Island, I did quite a few series of that as well. Um, I worked as a freelance sort of casting story and edit producer. That was pre predominantly what I did. Um, and then I switched to work in ITV talent in 2019. Um, I suppose I always had an interest. I always crewed my own teams, crewed my own shows. And I always, always had an interest ever since to, I think, you know, I'd do talks at the Brit School and things to make sure that people understood how it was possible to get into television. I always did that throughout my career. Um, and so something I'm genuinely passionate about and something, you know, which obviously works well in this role. So that's that's me anyway, I'll, I'll hand over to Eve now. Thank you, Lauren. Yeah, my background isn't as exciting or as long as Lauren's. <laughs> it's <laughs> exciting. <laughs> but um, yeah, so a bit of background for me and then I'll talk about what I kind of do at the moment as part of my role. So I graduated university last year um, and I got a degree in media, film and TV. I wasn't sure what kind of, I knew I wanted to work in the media in some capacity, but I wasn't sure what kind of avenue I wanted to go down. Because I feel like when you're at uni as well, it's very, you know, you're not sure and you have, you have to try a lot of things out to see what you, what you want to do. And during my years of study, I realised that TV was for me, just thought it just suited my skill set a lot better. And because of COVID while I was at uni, I wasn't able to do any like work experience placements or anything like that. So I just kind of, as I started my third year, started looking for a job because I wanted to make sure that as I left uni, I was able to kind of catch up on the experience I've missed by starting a job, basically. I know that's a lot harder than it sounds, um, but it's just kind of about thinking about get, like starting to look anyway, even if you don't get anywhere, just start to have a little look of what jobs are out there, what time of year, mm. and what kind of things that they're looking for as well, even just reading a job advert and seeing what they're looking for and then tweaking your CV. Uh, that's just what I kind of started to do my third year. And then I came across a entry level role on Emmerdale, which was a camera assistant. And I'd done a lot of like technical stuff um, through college and uni. So I was kind of confident with like dealing with cameras and all that sort of equipment. So I just thought I'll just apply for it and then didn't think anything of it because I had no experience and I was still at uni full time and um, ended up getting through having assessment days, interviews and everything like that. And I ended up getting a freelance contract on there, which was really good. Um, so I was juggling that at the same time as my dissertation, which was fun, um, but got through it. I'm glad I did because I met some really great people and learned some, so many things about different roles as well in the industry. Um, and actually, I always saying that I wasn't aware that the talent team even existed, if I'm being honest. I don't think a lot of people are. I think they just assume that the execs just find people and just pull them on. Um, but I just kind of I had a bit of like conversation with the talent team in the north when I was going through the Emmerdale process. Um, and I just thought that it just sounded like a role that I thought I'd be quite good at a lot of transferable skills. And um, I feel like with the knowledge of Emmerdale, like understanding a few of similar roles which cross over and um, that it would be a good role for me to go for. And here I am. <laughs> um, so as part as talent assistant, like Lauren mentioned, I kind of look after the junior role, so anything from work experience, uh, runner, junior researcher, loggers, anything like that, um, and just do some talent searches for that, meet like weekly talent as well, new people who want to get into the industry, 
um, and I also look after the work experience talent pool uh, with the, the talent coordinator as well. Um, and as Lauren mentioned, that's kind of a year membership. So the applications for this year have closed and they're going to reopen for the next year in the autumn time. Um, so I think it's definitely worth applying for. So keep an eye on the ITV Jobs website and our social media pages for when it's open. So it's basically a year long membership and we do like CD clinics across the year. And we also do power hour sessions where we'll get some teams in. So we recently had the Love Island team in and um, just talking about the casting process and working on location and how they find the villa and things like that, which was really interesting. Um, and we're hoping to do, we do them every month. We try to do every month across the year. So um, people have like get as much knowledge as they can out of the year while they're with us. And we also reach out to our teams on the shows and get week uh, one week to two week uh, placements across the shows, um, which is really exciting. So if people are lucky enough to get that, they get to go um, meet the teams, maybe go to the studio, see a live show recording. Um, and it's just nice able to network and meet new people and to boost the CV. And um, so that's kind of part of my job anyway, and what I do. Um, so yeah, that's the same work with Lauren and everything um, and try and get as much diverse and new talent in as we can. Yeah, well said. In a nutshell, <laughs> that's what we do. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you. If we just go to the next slide, that'd be great. Um, fab. So we won't take, um, we, we will briefly talk through this, but as I said, when we have caught, if you want one-on-ones and we we'll give you our email addresses at the end, we can absolutely talk about this in more detail. Um, but if we go to the next slide, um, we can just give you a very brief overview of the, the kind of two routes into television um, in Unscripted um, and what we kind of work with. So we've got the editorial side, which I mentioned earlier, which I have a background I've come from, um, and we've got the production side. So they're two routes essentially into TV. Um, this is a, a grid really, um, just to show you the sort of route upwards, because everyone likes to aim up and aim high um so this is the this is the kind of um route that a lot of people take um so like we mentioned you start as a, a work experience uh, or internship or you know apprenticeship uh well, like i said we want a work experience pool but i know it do do um internships and things like that as well um with a kind of separate department look look after that um but talking from us yet yeah, we start work experience which then leads you into run up paid runner work um you lead you go up to junior researcher researcher ap researchers um they you know you could be a casting researcher going out finding lots of wonderful people for the next series of love island you might be setting up shoots finding locations for the team there's lots of kind of you're a real support to the team at that level um, you then go up to the kind of producer, which becomes a lot more responsibility. You're kind of liaising and speaking to your senior producers and your series producers and supporting them. Um, and then eventually you can go up the sort of producer route up to exec producer, who are the big the big cheeses. They make all the decisions. It's all on them. Um, so that's the editorial kind of route. Or you could go up the shooting route into kind of uh, producer, DV director, series director. That is a lot more sort of technical. They look up, you can have a, a director in the gallery or you can have a producer director, you know, who, who shoot using the cameras or kind of work with crew out in the field and on location. So there are um, a couple of different routes you can go down. And on the side, you can sort of see, um, you know, got our talent management route as well is, is if that is of interest. Um, but you have sort of speciality, like I mentioned there, within these sorts of roles as well. So there's quite a bit of kind of flexibility there. Um, so that's it in a nutshell. Um, and this is our production management route as well. Production management, um, they very much look after the logistics, logistics side of things. They prepare and, you know, they, they, they work, you know, side by side and work very closely with editorial. Um, they deal with call sheets, travel, hotels, the budgets, 
all the money, you have to be very organized to work in production. Um, and that is the sort of, um, you start again, st everyone starts as a runner. I have to emphasize that everyone starts as a runner. So yes, that's production management. So I'm just aware of times. I know the ladies need to get through their things. So these are some, Eve, if you want to just quickly, we'll send this round, but Eve, if you'd like to just quickly go through some of the areas of where we advertise our roles um, and then we can get the, the ladies can take over. Yeah, so as Laura mentioned, the talent manager, I would say is like one of the main um, places that we search, like do our talent searches basically. Um, so definitely, you know, start looking into setting up an account on there. Um, even if you've not got any credits to pop on there, just make sure you've got a profile up and running, make sure you've got a photo, you've got email, phone number on there, a bit about you and what you want to do and make sure you've got a job title because you can still be found through talent manager by, you know, hiring managers even if you're not getting any credits on there. So just definitely have a look. Um, they often have jobs on there. We post our jobs on there as well. So have a look on there and stay in the loop and you can network on there as well. So it's great, um, a great one to be on. And of course, our social media as well. Um, ID Loves Talent is our handle. Um, we're across um, Instagram, Facebook and Twitter. And we do on our Instagram, we do like social media Q and A's um, every now and then. So we're on all the, the whole talent team will be online and you can send in your questions between 11 or 12 or whatever the time slot is, and we'll answer them live for you. And on Facebook, we're going to post all we post all our jobs on there as well. So if you're ever looking, you have a free for a period of time and you want to have a look for a job, definitely check out our Instagram pages or Facebook or anything like that. And it'll be on there. Um, and then these are just some of the other Facebook groups that we post in. Um, so if you're looking for entry level roles, all of our runner opportunities, whether it's a longer contract or a day runner, will be in the people and TV runners page. Um, and they also offer CV tips and advice in there. So it's definitely a group, good group to join. Even if you're not actively looking for work, just being in there um, and just seeing what's available is, is great. Um, people in TV jobs, another one we post in. Um, more senior stuff. So everything from researcher upwards is in that one. But again, you might find some really useful information in there. So it's definitely worth joining. Um, and then we've got our deaf, deaf and disabled people in TV one as well, which is a great one. Um, and then we've just got some other ways. So like, like we said, we do meet new talent weekly across like all of our team. So if you do want to meet with anyone in the team, you just, um, just drop us an email, which we'll have on the end of the slide um, and just request a chat and we can book you in whenever. Um, and we also have a email alerts mailing list. Um, so that goes out every Monday and it's just got a list of all of our active jobs that week. Uh, so if you're interested and you want to like kind of stay in the loop of all of our jobs and um, like I said email the email address and just let us know that you want to be a part of it and we'll start sending those out and um, but if you ever want to be removed you can just let us know and we can just take you off it's no problem um, and yeah here's just some other things that we kind of um, offer as well so we've got the IT jobs website where we offer there's more fixed term permanent roles on there and um, same with LinkedIn so for more freelance stuff, I would say stick to talent manager, social media, which is where we post most of our jobs. Um, and obviously we do advertise with our business partners as well. Um, and yeah, that is kind of where you can find of our jobs and stay in the loop. Perfect. Thanks, Eve. We just go to the next slide. I see. Oh, it's over to you, ladies. <laughs> Thank you. I hope that was all clear for you all. But again, at the end, we will absolutely share all of our contact details and things like that too. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you very much. So um, Sam and I are just going to talk you through a few of the slides that we've we've got prepared. Um, the, we just want to kind of really touch on kind of the representation of, of disabled people at ITV in this section. Um, so as Sam alluded to, part of our role is, um, well, a lot of our role is delivering on the, the strategy. So we announced our um, diversity acceleration plan in 2020. Um, and a lot of the work we do is ensuring that we have that on-screen representation, but also that off-screen representation and an inclusive culture at ITV. Um, so the next slide is a reel with all the kind of work that's happened over the last year so we'll play that um, and then we'll just kind of go into a little bit of detail around that as well thank you oh I don't know if we can hear anything Eve sorry can you not hear it no. sounds not working it was earlier when we tried it wasn't it yeah there we go Thank you. 
and welcome to Christmas Comedy Club with your host, Lost Boys Guy. In the last 12 months, you know, there are some things that we have achieved uh, that I'm really, really proud of. So I think it has put a lot of momentum behind what we're doing. The UK is like super magical. I don't mean in a Harry Potter way. I mean like it's a dynamic, creative, melting pot. This is a modern England. Joining the cast of Brancaster was incredible. And honestly, when my agent called to say that I had a self-tape to audition for Brancaster, um, I just assumed that maybe it was uh, maybe something to do with ticking a few boxes to say that they'd they'd seen uh, you know a good range of people and honestly when I got the phone call to say that I had been cast as Miss Scott in Manchester this felt slightly groundbreaking the first ever Emmerdale Pride officially open I'm not ashamed. I can't be any different to who I am. Being part of Step Up 60 as a writer on Walk the Line was a fascinating but eye-opening experience. I think Step Up 60 has given me the confidence to know that I am supposed to be in those spaces. Working with Mo on the Brits was a life-changing experience. We, we knew that we were doing something groundbreaking with that. I know that first and foremost, when, when it comes to people like Katie or myself, you might see certain things before you see us, right? But that doesn't mean that that is, you know, you can then ask anything you like. ITV's representation of deaf, disabled and neurodiverse talent has really come a long way in the very short time that I have been working with ITV. Sorry, I wanted to get everyone together. I wanted to find the right time to do the perfect, perfect timing, but basically I was born completely deaf. And I wear a cocker implant in my right ear. Okay. Representation is so important. It helps validate your existence in society. And as someone who grew up without representation, I've really fought to be part of the change that I want to see. And when our stories are missing, it's doing us a massive disservice. Fresh Cut is an ITV initiative where we take five black filmmakers to make their first one hour film. So my Fresh Cut film is called Everyone Can Rap. We're going to get the show crackalackies. <laughs> I is one of ITV's first leadership programs for senior people of colour. In a nutshell, having 17 people in a room that look like you, that are of the same level as you, um, and that have the same personal and professional challenges based on their ethnicity, is just refreshing, it's life-affirming, and it's involving. Chill, chill all over, that was amazing. The winner of Prince Cup Talent 2022. Thank you very much, Eve. Our um, sound was a little bit funny then. If it, it might just be our Wi-Fi, but if anyone would like to go and watch that again, it is on um, itv.com forward slash inclusion where you can look at our report and the reel for this year. Um, so thank you so much. So here we've got an image of the incredible um, Lost Voice guy, Lee Ridley, um, and we've got some, some um, kind of um headlines around here about our kind of um on-screen representation so um last year this was 9.6 percent disabled on-screen um talent um the highest proportion of all broadcasters and we've got the fantastic um lost voice guy who you've hopefully um watched the uh, christmas special um there as well um next slide please Brilliant. Um, then we have got four images here. On the left hand side, we've got the incredible um, Alex Brooker, who was the first physical disabled player to start and play in the Soccer Aid game last year. Um, 
I won't speak anything about this year, but it's yes. Oh, okay, brilliant. Um, <laughs> that's good to know. Um, so yeah, that's um, uh, fantastic. And then like you heard from Sam, it's been announced that he'll be a uh, part of the team this year as well. Um, in the middle there at the top, we've got Lee Ridley again. Um, so he's had two um, Christmas specials now, the first with the amazing Rosie Jones. Um, and then he came back as well last uh, Christmas. Just below him there, we've got uh, Melissa Johns, um, who stars in Grantchester. And as we heard, on the VT um, how important that moment was for her as well um, and then on the right hand side we've got a lovely image there of our um, the daytime um, women from the daytime shows um, and as we heard in VT as well we've got um, Sophie Morgan and Kelly Bryan who are part of um, the loose women panels um, and have openly spoke about their disabilities as well next slide Thank you very much. Um, here we've got an image of um, John and Joe Bishop, and I'll, I'll pass over in a second to Sam. Um, this is a, an image that was taken from Life After Death, um, Death, which follows um, the journey of comedian John Bishop and his son, um, who lost most of his hearing at the age of 15, and their journey to um, learn about the deaf community. Um, we've, we've highlighted this because it just kind of showcases the importance of the crew behind productions and um, being able to kind of tell their authentic stories and being part of the teams um, to kind of make these productions and why that is so important. I don't know if there's more. Well, yes, um, there's some really exciting things to say about this show. This is something that I'm super proud of. I work really closely with the commissioning editor on, on this particular film and um, it won a BAFTA at the weekend. <laughs> and what was really exciting about that is it won a BAFTA for the BAFTA Crew Awards um, for the director, the director, um, Charlie Melville. She, um, where it was her, her first time directing and she won it for Emerging Talent. That, that would not have won a BAFTA without the background stuff that was involved in that in, in producing that film, which included a deaf co-exec producer. Um, and they had a deaf um, assistant producer. They had a deaf second director and they had a number of other deaf members of the crew to ensure that we were authentically embedding the storytelling. So without those members of the team who have that lived experience, we wouldn't have been able to tell the story in the way that they told it. And the way that we marketed the show and the way that we um, trailed the show on, on screen. Um, I don't know if anybody saw it, but we, we um, made it as accessible as possible. And actually it was the first time ever that a show went out with burnt in subtitles on, um, on ITV1 where everybody had subtitles, whether you um, turned them on or not. And a signed version was available at the si same time as the main, um, as, the, as, the, as the show went out on ITV1, it was on ITV Hub at the time. So lots of stuff happened around that show and well-deserving of the back after and we hope it's going to win other awards too. Thank you. Next slide, please. Brilliant. I'll, I'll hand over to Sam for this one. I so, um, yeah, so just, just to give you a bit more insight of kind of some of the other stuff that we're doing across the business, we, uh, as uh, uh, Natasha said around kind of us delivering on our strategy, one of our key aims is about embedding inclusion and accessibility into the business. So one of the things we did last year was had an accessibility summit where we um, this was led by our senior leaders and it was for everybody to attend where we had the amazing Sinead Burke. Um, deliver a keynote and again um, she if if you've seen British Vogue this this week she um, curated uh, this month's um, uh, edition and was is, is a cover star so we are in good um, good hands with her but she delivered the keynote and it's about embedding accessibility across the business so we had some great examples from the um, I'm a celeb app as well as um, uh, other examples um, in various different teams one of the other things that we're part of with um, the other broadcasters is an initiative called the TV Access Project, which um, is about embedding accessibility into production. So we are working very closely with our 
uh, friends across the, the industry. So that's BBC, Channel 4, Sky, Paramount, uh, Netflix, Disney, Amazon, all of us working together to make sure that we are embedding accessibility into production, whether that is through looking at how we can make access to work more accessible and friendly for the industry, whether that is looking at how we uh, make sure that there is funding to pay for adjustments within production or just fundamentally looking at how production works to make sure that it is accessible for disabled people to join and thrive within the industry. So that's something we're actively a part of. Thank you. Brilliant. So we have um, here three images. On the left, we've got Amplify 2.0, which we are extremely excited about. Excited is our favourite word within the team. We're excited about everything, but we're really, really excited about this. Um, so this is a senior leader program um, for deaf, disabled and neurodivergent um, senior managers across ITV. Um, we ran this last year for um, senior people of colour across ITV and we will be starting our first session tomorrow um, for Amplified 2.0, which is fantastic. Um, in the middle, we have um, a um, uh, disability confident leadership badge. Um, now, hopefully you, some of you on this call will be familiar with this already. So um, we have leadership status at ITV in which we renewed um, recently earlier this year. Um, this essentially means that all of our um, job ads on um, itvjobs.com um, will have very um, detailed explanation of the minimum and the key criteria of all of our roles across ITV. Um, part of the commitment means that if um, a uh, disabled applicant discloses a disability as part of the uh, application process and meets that minimum criteria, um, they will be progressed to the next stage of the recruitment process. So that may be a task, it may be a telephone conversation or similar, whatever is kind of most accessible for you or kind of a more of a formal interview so that's that's part of the commitment there um, and then on the right hand side we have our an image from our disability access passport um, now this is a document that is owned by the individual um, all new starters at ITV are provided one whether that's an internal move or an external move and it's also um, available on our internal intranet um, this is a document that um, uh, an individual owns as they move across the business um, and to, to empower them to talk about their access needs, share those with their, their line manager and their team if, if they feel that they want to. Um, and they can talk through their access needs in an open conversation. So it empowers both the, the individual and the line manager to have those open and honest conversations to make sure that the, they're kind of able to kind of do their job to their best ability um, within ITV. Next slide. Thank you very much. So I spoke at about at the very start of the session, part of my role is working with our five amazing networks. They really are fantastic. Um, one of the, the networks is ITV Able, which is our disability network. Um, here we have some images from um, the the month that they held last year. So it was kind of through November and kind of the start of early December. Um, we held um, a series of internal events, um, discussions, um, quite quite kind of insightful kind of Q&As, um, kind of different things um, kind of throughout the month, um, as well as a, an away day where all the kind of ABLE members were invited to a fantastic location off site that was fully accessible, kind of lots of planning went into the kind of accessibility for everyone to get together obviously as we all know we've kind of through covid and other things that have happened we've kind of people have joined itv that may not have met other members of the network um so it's a great opportunity to come together so that's itv able is something for for all um people at ITV to join, whether you um, identify as disabled or you're kind of an ally or really interested to know what else is going on around the business and meet others. So um, yeah, that's just kind of a few images there of all the fun that we had last November. 
Brilliant. I'll quickly just kind of go through our details and I'll hand back to you both, Eve and Lauren. Um, so we've got um, the inclusionitv.com email address. Um, so that's an inbox that we manage if anybody has any specific kind of inclusion questions, um, ITV. Um, I'll obviously let kind of um, Lauren and Eve talk about the um, talent inbox. Um, but you can also follow us on Twitter as well at ITV for everyone, um, where we post a lot of kind of cool things that are happening around the business, within the industry, any fantastic roles that we would like to share with you as well. So um, if you haven't already, please do give us a follow on there. Thank you very much. Um, gosh, you do have a lot of exciting things. That's a good buzzword to have in your team. <laughs> yeah, so many exciting things. Um, yes, yeah, so, so, and I'll just go through our um, uh, contact information with you all. Um, and obviously, you know, we'd love to, we will open this up to, to questions shortly, of course. Um, but if there's anything at all that we've missed, or you'd like us to go through in greater detail, this is what the email address and our direct contact is all about so if you feel like you want to hear more have a one-on-one -on -one with us where we can answer questions that um, you have absolutely email us at itvlovestalent at itv.com and that is monitored daily um, so all of your inquiries can um, can come through to that and that comes directly to the team or follow as Eve said earlier us on our uh, social media handle which is ITV Loves Talent um, and we do have an Instagram Facebook and Twitter page on that so do give us a follow because there is where we advertise lots of roles and again just like things that we have going on um, with our work experience pool and things like that so it's really really good to kind of stay in the loop um, and ITV loves talent it um, we at Lifted post there but also some of our other labels also post there so it simply just won't be we lifted it'll be opened up to all of our, our labels and our talent team so it gives you a good variety so so there you go. We really do want to hear from you. So thank you. Um, that's everything from us, Mohammed. If you wanted to, um, yeah, sort of uh, open it up to questions. Thank you very much for sharing all that. Fantastic. Really, really, really amazing, lovely things to hear. And remember, for all candidates here today as well, you can also find all of the ITV jobs and the free entertainment jobs as well on the Even Break website. And if you log on to the website, which is brand new as of last week, you'll be able to upload your CV, you'll be able to create your candidate profile, where other employers will better come and find you. You can also create job alerts for ITV. Any, any, sorry, you know how it is. You sort of lose a rhythm of talking. So create job alerts for ITV. And as soon as new jobs get added, they will be emailed to you straight away and you can save jobs. And remember one more thing as well. Many of you may or may not know, but the Even Break Career Hive offers free candidate coaching and support for all disabled candidates at any stage of the journey. So whether you want help with your CV, whether you want interview advice, whether you want just some confidence building, getting back into the workplace after a recent disability or after a prolonged absence from the workplace, they're there to support you, even if you're early in the career. So these are just some things that even Rick offers, but there's loads and loads and loads of questions, 17 of them here. So let's see if we can um, go through some of them. Oh my goodness. Um, Actually, could one of you, uh, Toby, can you help with these questions? There's quite a lot. Oh, I've got some of them as well. If you want to and I think um, for those who don't know, I'm blind and use a screen reader. So it's always a bit tricky trying to pick through these questions. So Toby, I don't know if you don't mind. Yeah, happy to help or if. We've got them as well, Toby. We can go through them if uh, you like. Okay, perfect. Yeah, no um, problem. And in the meantime, Toby, if you can just share the links to the Even Break Career High for the career coaching and also the Even Break ITV page so candidates can just see and create their accounts. Yeah, of course. Brilliant. Thank you. Sorry, Natasha. 
Thank you. Uh, yeah, so we, we've, um, Rona, I think you um, asked us to talk a little bit slower through that. Um, apologies for that. If you would like to have a one on one with us, we could absolutely talk you through anything that you might want to ask us directly. So at the end of this, please do drop us an email and we can absolutely set that up for you, um, should that be of help. And should that be of interest? Um, so we can absolutely do that for you. Um, I think there's oh there's a question here about age and if this affects is there an age barrier? Absolutely not. <laughs> it is absolutely not. There's no um, well. Funnily enough, um, in Lifted and, and what we do within our team, we um, have a lot of um, people who switch careers halfway through. Um, so we had a dentist um, recently come in um, and one of our trainee researcher schemes. She was a research and now she's a casting researcher and going on to become an, a casting um, AP. And she's absolutely amazing. Um, and, you know, so we do absolutely um, strive to if you're right for the job and you have a good attitude and you're passionate um, absolutely no age bracket is no upper age but you do have to be 18 though to work with us but um, yeah, other than that no no upper age limit at all um, so I'll just have a little look through and here. I'll also jump in with a couple of these as I'm oh, scrolling sure. through them um, so a couple towards the bottom yes any disability is considered and you don't have to be diagnosed with a disability. I know there's someone here asking whether Asperger's is con considered under neurodiversity. Absolutely. Anything ADHD, dyslexia, dyspraxia, um, whether you're diagnosed or undiagnosed, that will 100% count. And in terms of transferable skills, I'm sure the entire team here will tell you, you do not need any experience in TV or journalism to join Lifted Entertainment and ITV because you all have transferable skills and yet the even break career coaches can help you identify those so please do contact them through the links Toby shared and as was mentioned after this event we will be collecting email addresses from candidates who would like to do one-to-ones with the Lifted Entertainment team, and we will pass your details on so you can talk to them directly about your potential career in Lifted Entertainment. Hand over back to you for some more questions that you've spotted. Thank you. Um, yeah, I believe there's also some questions around the um, guaranteed interview, guaranteed progressing onto the next stage, which Natasha went through. Um, obviously, whoever wrote that in, please do drop us a line and let us know maybe um, what that job was, what it is you applied for, and we can look into uh, into uh, that for you further. Um, so obviously that, you know, it shouldn't happen. I know when there's a very, very high volume that lifted and it, um, it's, uh, it's not guaranteed, um, and when it's an incredibly high volume, but more often than not, that absolutely should should be happening. So um, if, if there's anything you'd like to sort of raise, if there's a particular job, we can certainly look into that for you. Um, but we do absolutely strive and our teams are very much aware that that, um, that is our ITV policy. Um, and I think, yeah, what is it? Is data entry related to ITV, including digital design? Um, I mean, we don't recruit for those shows in Lifted. We don't get a lot of sort of data entry or digital design um, roles, but that's not to say that, um, you know, ITV, I know daytime might have a little bit more like that and some of our other labels, which are always um, advertised on the ITV um, jobs website when it's a bit more of a fixed term and maybe a bit more roles like that. Um, but as we said, editorial, um, editorial roles is what we predominantly look for mm it lifted so sort of speaking from from that perspective really brilliant and um the one from leon about increasing print size uh leon we can send you the powerpoint deck after this event so you can increase it on your screen uh, to make it easier to view so apologies about that uh we try to make these events as accessible for as many people as possible and it it it's we make our best effort. So yeah, anything you need after this event, 
please do reach out and we will send you the PlyPoint deck so you can enlarge it. Well, there's a good question here from Samuel. Eve, you might be best to answer this. How, how easy is it to become a runner, Eve? <laughs> oh. good question. Um, well, I mean, I think obviously getting that foot in the door is probably the most difficult bit. But I would say it is quite difficult, but you have to kind of be show show that you are like willing and eager to work for that company. Um, so like I said, look for day runner stuff because that is when they want someone that's not necessarily th that experienced. Uh, like we do quite, we have quite a few ru day runner stuff that comes in. Um, sometimes it's over a weekend as well. And it's just great to kind of just get your application in and even just get the experience of applying for a role and just getting your CV out there for like hiring managers to look at as well. But I guess it's just the case of trying to get as much advice as you can, reaching out to people like myself and Lauren and talent teams of shows you want to work on, asking to get as much advice as you can on your CV, um, ask to set up a chat, like you said, um, because... I feel like it's a lot more personal when you've got a face-to-face -face call rather than over email. So I would say maybe have a look, think of a show that you really enjoy watching and that you would love to work on. And then have a look at the end credits and reach out to maybe a production manager on there, search them on LinkedIn or just Google and see if you can find an email address for that company or anything and just send them an email but make sure you ask the question to set up a chat and um, because I would say most of the time people are more likely to get back to you if you have asked them a question because they'd feel like they have to reply to you I know when people have asked me a question I have to get back to them because I'll be thinking oh my god that person's asked me a question I've not replied and um, so yeah I would just say stick with it um, have a clear of idea of like what kind of shows you want to work on and just try and find out as many different contacts to reach out to and just get your name and CV out there. And transferable skills that we mm. absolutely understand when you're trying to break into the industry. You aren't going to have lots of credits. You are not going to have lots of experience under your belt. It's going to be, you know, you might have a retail job or you might have, um, you know, other transferable skills, which we would absolutely take on board. And I think when you have that attitude and that can do mm positive and that passion for what you really want to strive to do that will just go in your favor I know it sounds really mm. obvious but um, honestly it will really put you one step ahead of most uh, when you really sort of perseverance and that passion for what you want to do um, our work experience Paul absolutely you don't need a ton of credits for that it's just to show um, you know your transferable skills can be highlighted on your CV there and we will absolutely consider consider um, applications of that. You don't have to be an experienced runner at all. Um, that's the whole point of the scheme. So um, yeah, we, we um, do take that into account. And this is brilliant. Thank you so much. And, and I know we're running out of time. We've only got a couple yes, of minutes so. left. And I just want to cover a couple more spotted on here. So interesting one, are these jobs only for disabled people? And I'm guessing the answer is no. So even break, ITV and Lift Entertainment will advertise through Even Break because they demonstrate their commitment to inclusion and including people with disabilities and disabled candidates yeah. within the workforce. It doesn't mean you'll only be disabled if you can only be disabled if you apply, but that's why we recommend apply through Even Break because it is a dedicated platform and we have connections and networks and use our career coaches to help you. Another question yet around um, what to put in a cover letter and how to make their skills stand out. Again, um, that's something you can discuss with the team in the one-to-ones afterwards, but also use even break services. They're absolutely free for you. All career coaching, all advice, all support, any resource you find on the website is absolutely free to use. Um, one more, sorry, I'm like running through these just because like, there's so many questions, isn't there? We're just running out of time. 
someone asking about the recording. Yes, absolutely. Every event is recorded. Every event will be put on the Even Break website and on the Career Hive. This event should be up in the next week or so once uh, we've made it fully accessible with captions, with the BSL all joined together. And on the website, there's also lots and lots and lots of other Meet the Employer events there where you can find lots of information from companies who are in media, that are in journalism, in retail, or in banking, um, and many, many, many other sectors. So do check them out. And there's lots of good nuggets of information like that in there. Um, is there any final questions you guys can spot in there? Otherwise, we can wrap this up. I think there was one. Is it better to email ITV Loves Talent or Inclusion regarding future opportunities at Lifted? I'd say come directly to us because if you are particularly interested in Lifted and as I say, the, the freelance um, opportunities that we um, that we provide, definitely come through to us and we'll pick it up for you. That's brilliant. Thank you so much, Natasha, Lauren, Eve and Sam. This has been an excellent event, really fruitful, lots and lots of discussion. To all the candidates watching today, as I said, a recording will be up. We will be emailing you in the next couple of days. Um, so do respond to the email and give us any thoughts, any feedback, and let us know if you'd like to meet the team or alternatively, if you'd like to be put in touch with the even break support services as well. And most importantly, please register on Evenbreak and add your CV, fill in your profile, because that is how employers like Leafy Entertainment, like ITV, and so many more come and find you as candidates and how you can find lots and lots of great jobs, just like the ones you've heard about today. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> and we shall see you all at our next event. Thank, Thank you. you so much.